My name's Alan, and basically I'm going to put together for you all, this is going to be my first tutorial on cameras, and this is going to be pretty simple, and I'm hoping I can make it entertaining for you all. And so, let's just see how it goes. This is on the basics of photography. An education is... So the first thing we have to understand with a camera is that there are three parts to a camera. You have the shutter speed, or the shutter box, the aperture, also known as the f-stop, and the film speed, or the ISO. And these three things interact with each other like on a scale. You have to balance each one so that you can get the image you need. And later on, I'll go through how each of these work together. But let's take a look at the scale that we have. And with these three elements on the scale, which is a camera at its core basis, if you decide to let more light in through the lens, then it affects how much light, meaning you're adding light, which offsets the balance. So you have to compensate with the shutter speed or an ISO so that you rebalance the scale. And with each of these three elements, you have numbers attached to them. And each number has a meaning. So if you go to the ISO, which is the film speed, and for digital cameras, it's called an ISO because you have a digital back, which acts as if it, if it was film. And these numbers for the ISO go from 25, 1600, 3200, and they continue up. And this means that the smaller the number, the less sensitive it is to light. And the importance of knowing how these work is very essential because if you shoot a lower ISO, so a 25, it means it's less sensitive to light, which means you get a higher quality image without grain or noise in it. But if you're in a darker situation, maybe indoors or anything like that, where light isn't as available as being in the sunlight, that, in essence, you, would, you might have to shoot a 1600 film speed, which is more grainy and has more noise. When it comes to the f-stop or aperture, which is how much light you let through the lens, the numbers work in a different array. They go from a 2.8 usually to a 22 on most lenses. And what that means is the aperture affects how much light you let into the camera that hits this film speed, or the ISO. And so if you're shooting with a 2.8, you're letting a lot of light in. If you're shooting with a 22, it's a small little tiny hole. This affects the depth of field. Ansel Adams shot on the aperture of 64, and so the hole is really small, and so there is a larger depth of field available in his photography. But also, it varies. Sometimes people want to have an image that has a smaller depth of field. It all depends on what you're looking for, but being aware of that can affect how you take a photograph. Last, you have the shutter speed. The numbers on the shutter speed range from leaving the shutter open for 30 seconds all the way to having it only open for 2,000th of a second. And this all affects how long you let the light hit the ISO or film speed when it travels through the lens. So the shutter opens and closes. It's the box inside the camera that opens and closes, and you can leave it open for a long time. Or you can have it open really quick and close. So sometimes in sports photography, you, might, you may be shooting with a higher shutter so that you don't have the blur. Or you might be using a slow shutter if you're doing a time lapse. 
or you're doing a night landscape or a landscape during the day if you're shooting with a less sensitive film speed like 25 you might have to leave your shutter open a little bit longer and so as you can see the list of numbers I'm going to start going over a method to remember how all these interact and how to use them manually I know that this was a lot of information, but this is where we find the balance. And there's a rule out there, I believe Ansel Adams came up with it. It's the Sunny 16 rule. This is based on if the sun's out and above a 15 degree angle above the horizon. So if the sun's in the sky and there are no clouds in front of the sun, then you can use this rule to shoot manually. So what you do with the Sunny 16 rule is that the 16 represents the f-stop that you start with. So you set your f-stop, how much light you let through your lens, to 16, an f-16. And so this is geared towards landscape photography. But I'll show you how you can use it to your needs as well. And so when you set the f-stop at 16, your ISO and shutter will always be the same. And so if you're shooting with an ISO of 400, then your shutter speed should be very close to 400. Some cameras you can actually shoot with 400. But if your camera doesn't go to 400, you can round it up to 500. That, that will also be fine. And then the point of this is, let's say you don't want to shoot at an F16 and it's sunny outside. Let's say you want to have a you want to let more light through your lens so you can have a lower depth of field. You don't want to take landscape in this case. Then you can take your ISO and then you can do the math with that. It's like counting. So you'll set your ISO to 25 now. But you have right now a 25 ISO, a 25 shutter, and your f-stop is at 16. So what you can do there is you can take your shutter and then you want to decrease the amount of light that goes through your shutter. So you increase the speed of how fast the shutter opens and closes. So you go from 1 60th of a second to 1 25th of a second. And so that's a two stop change. Each stop is either half or double the amount of light that goes in or doesn't go in in this case, then you have to compensate through the lens and let more light in. So you have to go from the F16, which is a small hole that lets less light in, and you have to open it up. And so if you're going to go drop it down two stops and open up the aperture. So you'll go from an F16 to an F11 to an F8 then your shutter speed would be at 1 25th of a second. And so that means it would open and close a little faster, letting less light in. And then your lens would also be letting at the same time more light in. So it keeps the same balance, the same exposure, while you're decreasing the depth of field. And so you can keep doing those calculations all the way up to one two thousandth of a second. And so the Sunny 16 is a very essential thing to keep in mind while doing manual photography because you have more control over the photographs that you take. It's always good to know how to find a balance with this machine. In this fast movie, High pressure. Get it done yesterday, world. Aren't you glad there's one company that can keep up with it all? You got a deal good. I'm putting you down to deal with Dick. Dick, what's the deal with the deal? Are we dealing? We're dealing. Dave, it's a deal with Don Dork. Dick, Dork, it's a deal with Dave, Dick, and Dave.